Hi, my name is Francesco Rulli. I'm the CEO of Quello. I'm also the Chief Digital and Cognitive Officer of the Duomo of Florence. I'm here today with Enrique Rubio, who is the founder and the CEO of Hacking HR. So Enrique, if you can expand on your business experience and what you're doing uh, at the current time. Well, thank you so much, Francesco, for inviting me to share some insights. My name is Enrique Rubio. As you said before, I am the founder of Hacking HR. We are a global learning community bringing together HR leaders, HR practitioners from all over the world to discuss about all things that are important at the intersection of future of work, technology, organizations, people, transformation, innovation, and of course, the impact on HR. My background, I started my career as, a, as an electronic engineer, so I worked a number of years in, in technology, and then I switched to HR because I love working with people and for people. I, of course, like many other people coming from outside of HR, I realized that we have a great potential to do amazing things in human resources, but we need to step up the game. And we need to do a number of things that we are perhaps, that we haven't done in the past and we are not doing right now to become that incredible value provider in the organization. And that's what I'm doing with, with Hacking HR. Very nice. Second tips. Now, if you were able to read the future, uh, what do you think about uh, uh, what is, you know, is our future in terms of the post-COVID era and where do you see the challenges, but also the opportunities provided by this new reality that we're probably entering soon? Yeah, that's a great question. And I want to begin by saying that many of the problems that we are dealing with in the world today, they have been around for a long period of time. They are not new problems. People, inequality in the world, inequality in the access to technology, in the inequality in the access to healthcare, in financial inequality, climate change, the deep impact of technology in the workplace. All of these situations or problems, they are not new. They have been around for a long period of time, but COVID has both accelerated them and amplified them, if you will. If you look around just here in the United States, there are about 30% of the people won't be able to pay for rent over the next few months because they don't have a job. Six million people lost their health insurance because they lost their jobs. Millions of people lost their jobs. Small businesses are on the brink of extinction because there's no safety net for small businesses. Workplaces where there was always an excuse not to do the right thing now are having to be transformed and to change pretty quickly to stay, to stay up, you know, uh, updated and, and to stay doing business and, and surviving this, this crisis. So the first thing that I want to say is that many of the problems that we're dealing with were sort of brought up to the surface again by coronavirus. So what I, if I try to define a little bit about the future, what I am hoping is that it becomes a place where humans are really at the center of the work that we do in our organizations, that we care more for others, that we become more empathetic, that we truly build workplaces that are meant to not only make money for the shareholders, but also to transform the lives of the communities around those businesses where people can come to work and thrive and flourish and find meaning. And that to me is, is, is part of what I am hoping that future to look like. A future where organizations become much more agile, if you will, meaning that they are more prepared and ready for not just a pandemic, but many other crises that could happen. I mean, this is one, this is one of them. There will be another pandemic going forward in five or 10 years. This, there's going to be financial slowdown, and we've seen it in the world in the past four or five months. The world lost 10% of its, of its global GDP. So we are talking about organizations that need to become more flexible and agile in order to withstand the pain and the suffering that could come with potential crisis going forward. We also need to become, a part of the future that I'm imagining is a place where people can truly be and their potential and their talents can be tapped in order to find solutions to ongoing challenges and opportunities that the organizations may be going through. If you think about it, many organizations did, have, have not really considered that the answer to the problems they deal with is in, within their own walls, is in their own people. So they only have to ask the questions and allow them to unleash that voice and unleash that, that creative power, if you will. So going forward, part of that future is taking more into account the, the power of the people that work for you, giving them freedom to have some level of accountability, but also some level of decision-making. And that's going to be needed in this, new, in this new era of rapid changing conditions. So I'm imagining organizations being more agile, more empathetic, more flexible, more innovative, where people can thrive and flourish. 
and of course, just want to add more thing that I am hoping that we understand that first of all, we can we cannot continue to do the things the, the way we were doing them before. We need to change. Uh, the, the normal that we had before was not working for everybody. It was a normal that was working just for a handful of people. And just look around, Jeff Bezos just became, you know, the richest man in the world. I mean, he was already, but now he reached $200 billion in, in uh, net worth. When you see people struggling just to find a piece of, to buy a piece of bread out there in the street. So they knew that normal was not working for everybody. And then of course, I am hoping that we truly take into consideration the fact that the world is sending us a message the earth is sending us a message. Climate change, I'm not saying the coronavirus is related to that, but climate change is a real issue that we need to pay attention to. So that's, to me, the future. It's people, business, taking care of climate change and making sure that we build a new, better normal. Company. So I would love to hear your thoughts about the role of artificial intelligence in this future uh, post-COVID era. Yeah, well, as I mentioned before, technology and especially advanced technology like artificial intelligence, at least the way it is, the progress that we've seen so far, it's, it's meant, in my view, as a tool to amplify human capacities, whether it is data capacities, whether it is uh, physical capacities, whether it is decision-making capacities, but ultimately, the, the, the role of artificial intelligence and any other technology should be to amplify what we humans can do. So this, of course, creates a couple of questions. Number one, what things do we want to amplify? Because the same way that artificial intelligence can, can amplify human possibilities and human positive things, it can also amplify human negative things. And we see it out there. We see an increase in the amount of bots getting into Twitter and other social media, getting engaged in politics. Now we see deep fake, which is an artificial intelligence way to distort the, what, the, what people are saying. So, but on the other hand, we can use, for example, artificial intelligence to analyze thousands and thousands of pages of health reports and health documentation to find the cure to many illnesses that we haven't found a cure for. So the, the first question that I think we need to ask when we think about artificial intelligence, amplifying human capacities is, are those capacities that we want to enhance or amplify truly the ones that we want to amplify? Or do we need to step back and make sure that what we want to amplify in terms of capacities or processes are the right ones so that we don't, do the, that we don't amplify the negative, but instead we amplify the positive. So that's, that's one area. And of course, the other area is how do we use artificial intelligence to effectively amplify those human capacities, but at the same time, making sure that the people that will be replaced once we amplify some of those human capacities have an opportunity to find something else via reskilling, upskilling, or, find, or, or finding another kind of uh, employment opportunity, right? Because I think it was a couple of years ago, there was a report by McKinsey saying that automation will replace anywhere between 375 and 800 million jobs worldwide. That's a, that's, a, that's a shocking number. I, I don't think it's going to be possible for us to reskill, upskill 800 million people at the pace that artificial intelligence will replace those jobs. So what's important here is what are we trying to amplify? How artificial intelligence can help us be better? What are we going to do with the people that are going to be replaced with technology via whether it is artificial intelligence or any other technology? And connecting to your previous question is how are we going to create um, a, a strong safety net for those who are not going to be able to find new jobs, for those who are not going to be able to be reskilled and upskilled fast enough. And that's going to be a lot of people, by the way. So the question of artificial intelligence has so many different angles. And, and to me, I welcome technology. I, I, me being a technologist, I welcome technology. I just think that this kind of technology has a different uh, you know, impact in the workplace and the world as, as com compared to any other technology that we've seen in the past. So that's what I see artificial intelligence doing, amplifying human capacities, but we've got to make sure that the capacities that we're amplifying are the right ones and that we are taking care of the people that will be replaced by artificial intel intelligence. Thank you, thank you. Uh, very inspiring. And uh, now, uh, if people want to learn more about your work, what's the best way to learn more and reach out to you? Yeah, absolutely. They can go to my LinkedIn profile, my main means of communication. So they just go to Enrico Rubio. I, I think I'm the first one popping up in there. And they can go to the Hacking HR website, hackinghr.io. We have several other ways people can connect with us, Slack and our LinkedIn page and whatnot. But I think those two main pieces of um, uh, uh, communication would be, would, be, would be the best, the, the website and my own LinkedIn profile. Perfect. Thank you very much. Thank you, Francesco. Thank you for inviting me.